Okay guys, now welcome back to the course here on using AWS IoT Analytics. Now I originally did this lecture about six months ago when AWS IoT Analytics came out. I'm redoing it and that's because there's been a lot of changes in AWS IoT Analytics from Amazon and the changes are really good. It makes it a lot easier. You get rid of a lot of the unnecessary procedural stuff that really wasn't important. So the main thing to remember about this, this is an ad hoc analytics service. AWS finally realized if it's going to be ad hoc, we don't need all the bells and whistles of setting up an individual channel, pipeline, data store, and data set with complete, completely configurable options. Let's just automate the process. So I think they made the right decision. So this is going to be a lot shorter lecture, and I'm going to replace this lecture with the old one, which is like 18 minutes. So we can always go to the search box. I already have it in here, but I'll just say IoT Analytics. It'll auto-populate, come up. And so here's the big difference. We have a completely automated process. So I just have to give it a name. I'm gonna call it Analytics and today's date 4.1, and this is my second section, so it'll be B. So here it is, Analytics 4.1B. That's the name of our action workflow, super original. I'm not going to put a topic here because I'm going to have a topic from IoT Core. So let's go to Quick Create. Again, this is a completely new option with AWS IoT Analytics. So go ahead and Quick Create. And what's cool about this is that's all it is. Super fast. It created our data store, our channel, our pipeline, and our data set. And remember, previously, if you watched this lecture six months ago, you had to do all this individually. It wasn't difficult, but it was kind of a pain in the butt. So we don't need to create more. So that's super cool. And we're going to come back here so we can view our channel and pipeline individually before we get into analyzing our data. All right, now we can go back to AWS IoT Core. So we'll just go back here, go to Actions, and we're going to create a new action, a new rule with an action that's going to act on our incoming IoT data from our device or testing tool. So just go ahead here and hit Create. And we're going to call this the same thing, 41B, but we'll just underscore this and call this action. Or you can call it service, whatever rule, whatever you want. And we're going to kind of use the same requisites we used before. So I'm just going to copy this here, copy it in here. And you used to be able, you can filter on your pipeline. So let's say I'm sending in a big JSON package of data and for my quick and dirty ad hoc analytics, I don't want every key value pair. Maybe I don't want humidity index. Maybe I don't want timestamp. So I can filter that out here with this SQL like commands. I'm not going to do that here because when I run my pandas code in Python over an AWS SageMaker coming up, I can completely filter out anything I want there. So it's really not important. I'd rather keep all my data set and then filter it later then limit my data set and not have the ability to filter it. So that's normally good practice for IoT. So let's just go ahead and select everything from our JSON packet. And we'll have our topic. I'm going to use that Node-RED testing tool for this because I can get that JavaScript which automates the JSON data package with random variables. You don't have to go back and upload this to your ESP32, your Raspberry Pi, or ESP8266 and upload the firmware. But if that's what you want to do, you can send your own JSON package through your actual device. It does not matter. I'm just using the Node-RED testing tool to simplify that process. So if you remember my topic on my outgoing MQTT node from Node-RED, which we're going to go over in this lecture, was my topic too. I just remembered that. So that's fine. Select everything from that JSON incoming IoT package and we'll take it from my topic too. That's our MQTT topic we're going to subscribe to on AWS IoT and publish from on our device or in this case our testing tool. Okay, I hope that was clear. Now here's where we add our action. If you've been following along this course, you've seen this procedure before. So go ahead and add action and scroll down here to one of the newer options. This is the newest option, step functions. We won't be covering that here and go ahead and hit IoT Analytics Channel. And of course, we've covered most of these other services in the course. So for this one, IoT Analytics Channel, and of course, it's not just the channel, it's just connecting the channel to the pipeline, to the data store, to the data set. But from IoT Core, all we need to do is hit the channel. So Configure Action, 
And we already created this. That's what we did in the previous step. Remember, it created all those things for us. So we're just going to select the one we previously just created two minutes ago. And it's this one, as you remember, Analyph 41B channel. Um, so we're going to select that. Now for role, I could use an O role because I previously had roles. I'm telling you right now, this role is super simple. It's going to just be a put batch from IoT Core. I could go into IAM services and show you what this role looks like, but just you can do it yourself, but just trust me. All it's allowing you to do is to put incoming data from IoT Core into the channel. It does nothing to do with any other service. So I'm going to, have to go ahead and instead of selecting a previous role, I'm going to create one. And that's going to create the role we'll need. So I'll just say anal 41B, and I'll call this my role. And again, if you go to IAM, you can look at what this role is in that JSON format. No problem here. But this one will be already attached to necessary policy. And we're good to go. So let's add that action. And that's all we have to do. And everything looks good here. So go ahead and create this rule. And then the last thing I want to make sure is that my rule is actually enabled. So it seems to be enabled. Normally what I like to do is refresh the screen and make sure that rule is actually enabled. And it re-alphabetized him here. So it's right here and it's enabled. So we're good to go. And I want to disable my old rule because I don't want two data sets. So I can always enable, as you know, these actions later. But let's enable that. Now we can go to the test console and subscribe to our topic. So remember our topic, and I'll show you in a second what it is on the, on the testing tool or your device. You can use whatever topic you want, just keep it consistent through this uh, service creation process. So my topic too, I can keep my quality of services zero. I'm not gonna exceed 100 messages. Subscribe to topic. Again, I'm gonna use the Node Red tool. So let's go to Node Red, and I know I'm using Internet Explorer, but you gotta remember, Internet Explorer is cool again, now that Balmer's out, so you can use whatever browser you want, but I went over to Google Chrome and I have my Node Red here, but it works with anything. So if you didn't see my previous lecture where I went over Node Red, make sure to do that now. But if you already know how to do Node Red, I just created this simple flow where if I stick timestamp here, I have a simple process where it adds a timestamp to this data payload. And then I have a debug queue over here, which you'll see what it is. But this is MQTT outbound node. We'll send it on to AWS. This is already configured in a previous lecture. So if you don't know how to do this, I'll, I'll put a link to it. Now, if you're doing it from the device, I have an incoming HTTPS node here, which takes a git and then does the exact same thing. And I output it here to the test output and debug, and it goes straight to my topic two for uh, AWS IoT. I don't send this to add additional info in the JSON JavaScript code. Again, that looks like this. I'll provide that for you, but it just generates random values. But if you're doing it, the point is if you're doing it externally from a device, then you don't need this test package here. So let's go ahead and send some test packages and make sure they come into AWS IoT Core. And remember, our IoT analytics role and action are currently enabled. So all this data is going to be coming into the console and it's going to be recorded through that channel to the pipeline till the data store. All that's being automated and I'll show you that in a second. So there's one, one data package and you can see it has temperature, timestamp, humidity, humidity index, all this good stuff. And I'm going to show you later how to get whatever you want. I'll send a few more of these. I really don't want a huge data set. The bigger data set you have, especially even to SageMaker, it may cost you like three cents a run. So if you don't get crazy here and let it run for two hours and have some 500 piece data set because your AWS IoT analytics bill may, may go up to a 25 cents. So this will be very, very cheap just for these minor data points. Okay, let's make sure that all works. So let's go back over to IoT Core. And great, we have all this stuff in there. So we've completely succeeded on the first part. So in the next lecture, let's go check that our data channel and our data pipeline actually hit and are recording this data and look at our data set. Then after we finish that lecture, we'll go in AWS SageMaker and be able to actually graph and filter our data a bit from there and get some real impromptu ad hoc analytics. Okay, I'll see you in the next lecture and we'll work with this data we just recorded.